what's going on everybody? It's Mike with Actuonics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to control our LAC board via USB, which is one of the five control modes supported by the board. The USB control mode is ideal for testing as it gives you quick control over several different aspects of how the actuator functions. If you haven't yet, now's the time to go back and watch our intro and basic LAC setup video. That video will show you how to set up the LAC board when you first receive it. I'm filming this video assuming that you've watched that one. Now we've said this before, I'll say it again, the LAC board only works with P-series actuators. It will not work with S, I, or R-series actuators, so make sure you have a P-series device on hand. So here's how you set up the board to operate via USB. We've got one set up here. You'll see that I have positive and negative power connected to the board. You will need an external source of power um, to use USB control. Uh, you do not get enough power through the USB cable to drive an actuator. So an important thing to note here is the power supply, whether it's a battery or a DC power supply, whatever, has to match the voltage of the actuator. And this is important because we have both six and 12 volt actuators. So if you've got a six volt actuator, you need a six volt power supply. Same is true for 12. This here is the USB cable. This is gonna go out and plug into your computer. And this is where the actuator plugs in. This here helps you make sure you've got the orientation correct. Yellow aligns with this cable. So make sure you've got the cable, the yellow one, closest to the word yellow on the LAC board and you're good to go. Now, if you have a PQ12 actuator, that won't plug in here. That'll plug in right here to this ribbon cable receptacle. Make sure you've got the contacts facing the right way on that one. Now we're gonna have a quick look at the LAC software. So this is what you'll see when you first open the LAC configuration utility. You have control over the same functions here as you do on the board itself. And this bar up here indicates the position that the actuator is actually in. There's nothing there at the moment because I don't have an actuator plugged in. The values shown here when you first open the utility are the default settings. If the LAC board is already in disable default mode, which is accessible in the advanced configuration tab. These settings may not match the settings in the LAC board. This utility cannot read the LAC's existing configuration. It's only capable of overwriting and verifying successful configuration. And it's worth noting that only the values you change here will be transmitted to the LAC when you disable the defaults. If you want to share a configuration or save it for later use, you can do that from the file menu up here. If you open a file when the LAC is connected, all of the settings are sent to the LAC. So once you've made some changes here, maybe you've changed your extend and retract limits, maybe you've changed your speed, you're going to go over here and click disable defaults. If you don't click this button, the changes you've made in the utility will be lost when the LAC is powered off. When you have disabled defaults, pots one, two, three, and four on the board itself are ignored in that mode. So you cannot make further changes on the board itself until you plug the board back in and re-enable the default settings. Now there's a lot more you can do in this advanced configuration area here. We're not gonna cover this in this video, uh, as stated at the top here, editing these values can affect your actuator life. One last thing, this field down here, device number, is so that you can open another instance of the utility and run a second actuator, device 2 for example. So that's an intro to the LAC configuration utility. Thanks for watching.